Hey everyone, how's it going? It is your pal Sal here, and today we are talking about Christina Aguilera's album, Just Be Free. Well, album if we can call this an album. So, when doing my research for these videos, you know, I like to go in chronological order, and the album that technically comes after her, um, well, I guess technically my kind of Christmas, but for this, for me, we'll say, because I don't really consider Christmas albums like the full, like a full album. Um, so the last one is really Me Reflecto. And um, so this one, and then you, the natural progression was stripped. Well, here's the funny thing, is that this album called Just Be Free um, was released before that. And Just Be Free is actually a demo album that Christina Aguilera recorded years before her first album. So in doing my research, what I found out was that this album was recorded during the final season of the Mickey Mouse Club, um, which as we all know, Christina Aguilera was a part of, um, as a way to um, get her foot in the door with producers and like try and get a record deal. And she ended up meeting these two guys, um, I believe their names are uh, Roberts, Alica, and Michael Brown, and they, get, they basically said, it's like, here's a studio, everything you record will be ours, and we won't release it. Um, and basically, she recorded these rough demos um, to send to producers and stuff like that. And then as Christina Aguilera was getting ready to release Stripped, they were like, you know how we said we weren't going to release this? Well, um, we own it, and it's time. And so at first, Christina Aguilera was apparently very upset, and then eventually she tried to sue them, and then she was like, you know what, fine, release them. I don't care, but I want this letter with it or something that says this is not reflective of who I am today. It's more of like, you know, listening to what could have been or what the past was, you know, all that. So what seems fishy to me about this album is that I get why she doesn't want, didn't want to release at the time, but apparently none of these songs are all that finished or even sound that good. So I'm like, why would you even send that to producers? Like, wouldn't you want something that you would want to be reflective of you? Like, even if it isn't, like, great, you want it to still be decent enough that it seems passable to be on the radio or something. I don't know. But I figured before we did Stripped, we would listen to this because um, I thought it would be I thought it would be fun, um, and it came out on August twenty first of two thousand one. There's no information on if it charted on anything like that. So um, I guess without further ado, we're just gonna give Just Be Free her her demo album a go. Um, let's see how we feel, guys, and then and then after this, we will definitely you'll get your strip video. Don't you worry. I'm excited to listen to it too. So. Um, that's what's happening after this. So here we go. Let's listen to the, the very beginning, little, little Christina Aguilera with um, the first track, Just Be Free. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Oh. Oh shit. So that was not half bad whatsoever. I thoroughly enjoyed that. It reminded me a lot of Not Myself Tonight. Um, this song, I think, could have been edited a little more. It felt a little long. It felt very repetitive. But, you know, for her being as old as she was, because, like, what, this was recorded in the mid-90s, um, it sounds a little ahead of its time, almost. And it... She sounds so mature. Like, if they had told me that she recorded this, like, sometime in between the first album and Stripped, I'd buy it. Um, so that was Just Be Free, um, and I actually really liked that, so let's go, <laughs> whoa, track number two, By Your Side, here we go.
Okay, another one that could have used a little bit of an edit, a little long at 4 minutes and 11 seconds. However, not bad. Doesn't sound like something that I wouldn't be like, I'm okay with that. Um, I think it could have used a little bit of a rougher mix. Um, but other than that, I liked it. I thought it was catchy. Um, not, not that bad, to be honest. Track number three, Move It. Okay. Ooh. Move it. Because I was gonna be like, move it. Okay, so Move It is okay. It has a nice, the verses are nice, but the chorus is basically non-existent and the one that's there is so lack, it's so lackluster. It was reminding me at first of that Celine Dion song, um, Dance With, like, what's it called? Dance Like Nobody's Watching, and you know, it says, I'm gonna dance, 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 dance. Like, nobody's watching, I think that's what it's called. Um, and I was like, Wow, imagine if that song had as weak of a chorus as this song does. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think it could have been retooled. I really do, but as it stands, it could have, it needs to be retooled. Um, it's fine. She sounds fine. Um, track number four, Our Day Will Come. And this is a cover as well. Okay, so I'm not familiar with this song, but in doing the research of, like, as it was just playing, and it never stopped playing, um, this song was originally done by Ruby and the Romantics, which is a band I'm not familiar with, um, or a group I'm not familiar with, but then I looked at, like, other people who've recorded it. Frankie Valli has a version of it. Amy Winehouse has a version of it. And, like, looking at the list on Wikipedia of, like, the type of people that have sung this song, I'm like, okay, so, oh, Cher did a version of it. Um, uh... This is basically an American standard songbook type song. And as I was listening to this, I was like, I feel like I'm listening to the death of music right here, right now. Um, I mean, she sounds fine, but this is horrible. This version of it sounds horrible. I've never even heard the original. I'm sure I have. But as far as I know right now, I have not. And I hated every second of that. It went on too long. Um, that's all I remember is that weird sound that was in the background. Um, I never want to hear this again. Um, so far, this is the only thing that I think is appalling on here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, that was not good. Um, it's not, it's not Christina's, that's the problem. It's the, whoever thought, you know what's a good idea? This version of this song. Um, sorry. Okay, track number five, Believe Me. Here we go. Okay.
Hurts to Believe Me is actually a pretty solid track, and that was a blessing to hear after um, the last one I just listened to. Um, so I have to say, this song kind of sounds if you combined um, Blessed and I, t I Turn to You into one song, and I'm not mad about that. Um, it's not exactly the most original piece, and I've said that again about I Turn to You, but um, I didn't hate that, and I wouldn't be ashamed of that getting released. Um, again, what's so funny is that I was told that um, she sounds so young here, and I'm like, she sounds like the bad bitch I, I heard in the first album, so um, I don't know. Uh, but that was Believe Me, I liked it. Probably the most Celine Dionish song so far, but uh, I'm here for it. I'm always here for a little Celine Dion. And uh, I'm excited, I'm, well, I don't know if I'm excited, but let's just get through, let's see what else we got coming for us on this album. Track number six, Make Me Happy. Okay, ooh, a little R&B. bad either. I loved the R&B vibes. I love that it was mostly in her low register, this song. Um, again, does not sound like a teenage girl here. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I don't think that that's a song to be ashamed of. Um, that could have found a way on one of her albums easily. Um, it sounds very much like something that would be on the first album if they went a little, maybe a little more heavy in the R&B direction. But nonetheless, not bad. I didn't hate it, and uh, I I liked it. Track number seven, entitled Dream a Dream. What's the dream? Tell me, Christina. There's nothing that's too tough. There's nothing that's hard enough for me and you. Okay, I want to make one thing very clear. I didn't hate this song. It's not a great song. It's not, but it's not a, it's, it's not a great song, but it's not a horrible song. This sounds like it was recorded in one take. They had one take to do it and they did not do any editing to fix her voice because there are some moments, and again, if you get, are mad at me for saying this, I'm sorry, this is how it sounds, where she is so slight, like this much, slightly under pitch and you can clearly hear it. And I'm like, 
I, like, it sounds so unfinished, so wrong. How they, I, I understand if she was mad, if she, like, got a hold of the early, like, tracks and was like, uh-oh, I don't want this out there. Um, if they had fixed her voice or if she had gotten a couple of other takes, it would have been fine. But the fact of how unfinished and messy it sounds, this sounds the most unfinished out of all of these so far. Um... <laughs> I, I, th I see too. Again, I have not listened to Strip, but knowing the ambiance and idea of it and the one song I do know off of it, I would not want people to think that this was the direction I was headed, but oh my god. That was the... That gave me a good laugh today. I needed that. So thank you, Christina, for that. And thank you to the guys who released this. But, um, oh my god. <laughs> Track number eight, The Way You Talk To Me. Okay, we're getting another R&B influence one. Oh, this kind of sounds like Deborah Cox's Sentimental. So I'm here for that. kind of sounding like sex for breakfast in a way. Is that all? <laughs> okay, so again, I feel like the R&B tracks are the best ones on here. Um, that was fine. It honestly reminded me of like a less, a less lush sex for breakfast. Again, even though I don't really love that song. Um, it was, this was fine, felt a little long, um, very repetitive, but I think that's also its point. Its backing beat reminded me of Sentimental by Deborah Cox a little bit. Um, I didn't hate it, I liked it, I think it, it, it's worthy of being out into the world for people to hear. Um, that's about all I have to say. Alright, track number nine, Running Out of Time. Here we go. Okay, oh another... Another funky celebration. Here we go. I'm gonna get a celebrating. Okay, so this was another song that suffered from it sounding like it was the first recording. Not as bad as the other one, but there were definitely, again, some spots where I was like, that is not, that is slightly under pitch Miss Aguilera. And I'm not saying that is a bad thing. I know I cannot sing as well as Christina Aguilera. But in analyzing this, I was like, I was like, uh-oh. I was like, we need to re, we needed to re-record that. And they didn't, they didn't, that didn't happen. Um, that was fine. Again, it went on a little too long. Um, repetitive. Uh, there's also, okay, so in this album, we're gonna skim through these real quick, because I'm just kind of like, eh, about it, because these were on the album, but they're also just remixes. So we get three remixes, which is the Move It Dance Mix, so let's take a little skim of that real quick. <laughs> I think I enjoy that better than the first Move It, so that's good to know, um, because let me hear Move It again. Um, yeah. Get 
Is and this that one, it? yeah, that one felt unfinished, and this this feels right, more right. Okay, so that's good. Track number eleven, which is Believe Me, which is a dance remix. <laughs> That's fine. Um, this is just be free. All right, and then just be free. The Spanish remix is just it in Spanish with a light, slight Spanish more vibe. Okay, that's all I really needed to know. Um, normally, I would cover those, but I. Uh, 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 so, before I get into my thoughts, I asked you guys on Instagram what you thought about this album, and only one person responded, because apparently only one person has listened to this album. I mean, it was from Jordan Lake Live, and he said, not bad, she sounds so young. It was just demos from when she was a child. Christina does not approve of this album. I don't, I disagree with the fact that she sounds so young. She honestly sounds the same here to me. Um, but, uh, okay. Um, I didn't love this. It was kind of cool to listen to. Um, but it was unneeded, you know, I, I kind of, I agree, I believe in, like, le things leaking and, you know, demos and stuff like that. Um, I understand why she didn't want it to happen the way it did. I think she would probably been, she would have been maybe happier if, like, YouTube had come out and, you know, these had just leaked. Um, they sound pretty finished except for a couple, which I'm sure we all, we all remember, um, me talking about. But, you know, it was fine. I don't think anything really stuck out to me. Just Be Free could be a fun opener for a concert. But other than that... Um, some of these songs need to not be free and kept under lock and key. Um, because they just weren't finished. Um, it's fine. Again, it's not, it's not appallingly bad. Like, I don't think anyone would be listening to this and Christine, be like Christina Aguilera, that hack. Um, but it's, it's interesting. I was, I'm happy I did this because it was fun. <laughs> but, um, what are, what, I guess that's really all I can say. I mean, like, there's not much to it, but, um. What are your guys' thoughts on this on this little album? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Salvador J. Rocha, and I will see you guys very soon. We have a big one. I'm excited because, like, I feel like this is the biggest album I'm going to be listening to on this channel that I've never heard anything from, and that is Stripped. Um, so I'll see you guys then when we do that. But uh, this has been fun. Um, have a good day. And again, tell me what you feel because I'm curious to see what the fighter fans think of, of this little piece. Um... Thank you guys. See you soon.